We'll come up towards the tops of our mats, ready for our 30 minutes. Uh, I guess you could call it power yoga. It sure feels powerful, or, or we feel powerful after we're done with it, I hope. All right, we'll come up to the tops and get right into a warm up. Breathe in, reach up, breathe out back to just a regular mountain. A few of these. Take a moment to connect to your breath. Let go of our day and bring our kind and our gentle awareness within our own bodies. We'll turn this into a flowing chair on an exhale. Inhale, sweeping back up. Exhale, sitting back. You can sit down as far as you'd like to, depending on how your knees are feeling today. Shifting the weight back slightly. And when the arms are feeling even warmer, we can bring our biceps right up towards our ears, press into both of our feet as we sweep up. Turning that one into a full forward fold flow with maybe a back bend at the top and a big full fold. Sweep back up, breathe in. Exhale, dive forward. Sweeping through all on your own, hinging at our hips and lengthening our spine. Modifying any of the movements today to suit your own practice or what you're used to, or just what feels good for you. Last one, hold it down on your forward fold, let your head hang, let it be heavy here. A small bend in our knees to protect our back. Halfway lift, breathing in, also known as monkey pose, forward fold again. Couple more. Last one. Hop, step, or jump back to a plank position. We'll turn the creases of our elbows just slightly forward towards the front of the mat. Let's do some knee to elbow, side to side. Knee to elbow, knee to elbow. And if you'd like to, try to bend your elbow and place your knee up above the, and behind it. Warming up our triceps. One more downward facing dog, push the earth away, anchoring down into both of our feet. <sighs> Wonderful. Inhaling into plank pose again, exhaling to chaturanga or come right to your belly with me. Up dog, your cobra, breathing in, back down to our bellies. We'll inhale this time to all fours. You may need to shift your knees and your hands so they're underneath and start to move through our cat and our cow. One vertebrae at a time. Oh, I had to pull them up once so far. There we go. A count, tally of how many times I pulled them up. So if you wanna make this a little more challenging, you can lift your shins, your knees up off the mat. Last one, you can take a rust and child's pose or down dog or start to float right into our spinal balance, opposite arm forward and foot. And let's do a little crunch underneath. Staying on the one side at first. Moving with your breath. Last one on that side. Come to all fours. Now let's sweep whatever hand you weren't reaching with. So the one that was taking most of the weight through, thread the needle. We've got our hips high, no weight on our head. It's in our shoulder, in our knees. We'll press the opposite hand back down into the mat and start our spinal balance on that other side. So reach and crunch. Amazing, matching your movement to your breath. If it feels nice, closing your eyes. Right, we'll come to all fours. And that hand that wasn't reaching, now we'll sweep through, thread the needle, palm faces up, stretching our shoulder. Finding your breath again. Pressing the hand into the mat to help you back up. We'll go back to child's pose or pushing up into downward facing dog. Breathe. Looking between the hands, we'll be doing a few stink bug push-ups that we're gonna add on to our um, sun salutations. 
So the fingertips are just a little bit closer, pointing towards the center of the mat. Stamp your forehead down and push back up. We keep our backsides nice and high. Do as many as you feel you want to, as long as you can still breathe. And then we'll meet back in downward facing dog. From our downward facing dog, let's take our right foot up between the hands, rise up into a full lunge. And on an exhale, we'll twist it. Left hand to the mat, right hand to the knee or reaching up. Back up to your lunge, breathe in, exhaling all the way back to downward facing dog. We'll bring the opposite hand through, inhale into your lunge. Exhale, we'll twist it. We've got a strong back kneecap facing the mat, our back heel is high. Forward fold on your next breath out, some space between our feet. Halfway lift, breathe in. Folding, breathing out, it's amazing. Sweeping up to the sky. We'll touch our thumbs together maybe, and then bring our hands back behind us. Chest expansion, breathe in. And if you want to, you can fold forward, only if you want to, of course, or you can stay up. All right, let's release those hands and move on to our sun salutations for this class. Whenever I step, jump back, you don't have to jump back. You can step back or walk back. Plank is your option for chaturanga or take a little rest at any time. <laughs> Big breath, reach up. Exhale, dive into your fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Hop, step or jump back to chaturanga or plank. Hold or flow into an up dog and then a down dog. Right foot lunging up between the hands. We'll take an inhale to rise up and an exhale back to chaturanga or your plank pose. Hold or flow through an up dog or cobra or hold your plank and then meet in downward facing dog. Left foot between the hands An inhale will bring us into our lunge, engage your core and an exhale takes us right back to chaturanga or plank. Hold or flow, honor your body. Meet back and down dog. So like we did on Wednesday, we're doing three jumps today, keeping the bum high. One, two, three. I know it's hard. Halfway lift, inhale. You'd think three jumps makes it easier, but it doesn't. And fold again. Chair pose, breathe in. Exhale, standing up into mountain. Let's do it again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, dive. Halfway lift, breathe in. Hop, step, or jump back to chaturanga or your plank, hold or flow. Shine the heart through. Meet in downward dog. This time the left foot will come first. One lunge, breathe in. Back to chaturanga or plank, hold or flow. Meet back in downward dog. Right foot for your lunge. If it feels okay, our back heel is high. We rise up and back to plank or chaturanga. Hold or flow, breathe in, downward dog. And we're doing three jumps. So we try to really engage the core, lift the hips, lift the hips, lift the hips. Oh. Halfway lift, breathe in, hold, breathe out. Chair pose, breathe in. Exhale, we'll stand up in the mountain. Two. <laughs> well, I think everyone is. Let's do two more. Big breathing. We reach up, breathe out, dive forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Hop, step, or jump back to chaturanga or plank. Hold, my friends, or flow, whatever works for your body. Downward dog. Right foot between the hands. Find your lunge. A whole inhale brings you up and an exhale brings you back to downward facing dog. I mean, plank or chaturanga. <laughs> Hold or flow. We'll meet back in downward dog, left foot between the hands. Take a look at where you want that foot to land and then rise up. Downward, back to plank or chaturanga. Hold or flow. And then back to down dog. Our three jumps, engage that core. 
Oh, halfway lift, inhale and fold. Chair pose, breathe in. Breathe out up into our mountain. One more, you can go all at your own pace or do a different version or stay with me. Rise up, dive. Just close your eyes and do what feels good. Halfway lift, hop, step or jump. Plank or chaturanga, hold or flow. Downward dog, right foot between the hands. Rise up to your lunge. And back to plank or chugger. It's so hard with your eyes closed. Back to plank or chaturanga. Hold or flow. And meet back in downward dog. Left foot between the hands. Try rising. Eyes closed. And then back to plank or chaturanga. Hold or flow. Downward dog. Our three jumps. Look where you want to jump. Oh, halfway lift, fold, sweep all the way up. Exhale into mountain. All right, we're gonna open up our hips today, making way to that one-legged pigeon pose. Yes, sounds exciting. So you might wanna bolster or block. Yeah, okay, we're gonna start in tree actually, which normally we don't do. Let's take our left knee and soften it a bit so we're not locking our joint, it's soft. Our right toe will go out and we'll turn that heel towards the body, open up our hip and then choose where you wanna put your foot, anywhere but on your knee joint. You can bring it up above your knee or below. And then you can find your tree pose. You can make any kind of branches you want. Let's do cactus arms today and draw the shoulder blades together at the back like we're holding on to um, a donut or something. Feel the belly button come in towards the spine. <sighs> Amazing. We'll just be switching sides. So bring that knee around and we'll do the other side. Foot goes out, bring it in and up. Soften up that knee. You can play around with bringing your foot up or below your kneecap. If you do bring it up into your, um, above that kneecap, try to press your inner thigh into the sole of your foot. Cactus arms, if that feels nice. Belly button strong. The obliques come in to support the spine. Great job. Let's bring our hands up and hold our elbows. This has been called palm tree sometimes. And release. We're moving into warrior two. Your right foot will come up towards the top of your mat. Your left foot lunging back, heel down. We open up this chest to face the windows. Relaxing through our shoulders. And you could be gazing down your front hand. If that feels good or not. softening our jaws, keeping our core strong. We've got our right knee bent, but we're pressing into both of our feet at the same time. Moving into triangle, straightening your front leg, but not locking. We'll open up our palms, reach forward and hinge down where we can use a block to support our hand, but trying to use our core, our back to hold us in this position can adjust anytime you need to, of course. Looking in front of the hands, we're moving here right into balancing half moon. I mean, in front of the right foot. Lift back foot and our balancing half moon. Here we go. For anyone that wants to add more onto their balancing half moon, you can do some knee bends. Whew. We're gonna take this into horse pose. So that right foot goes back, not quite as far as you had it last time. Toes turn towards the long edge of your mat. We'll go into eagle arms. Let's do a right elbow on top of left. Bend the knees and hinge. Try and bring our rib cage between our thighs, looking at our hands or at the mat. Breathe.
Amazing. Press into the feet, we'll rise back up. Reach up, bring the palms together, take a little stretch. And we'll do that sequence on the other side. Turn towards your right toe up and then switch those feet. Left foot comes up, right foot back, right into our warrior two on the other side. So most likely facing the wall. So you can stay with that one. Sink down as much as you want to. Moving into our triangle, straightening out the left leg. You can reach forward slightly with that right arm and then or left arm and then reach up with the right hand towards the ceiling. If you're taking care of your top shoulder, you can tuck that back hand behind you and just rest it on your back. We all know where this is going now. <laughs> and looking at our front foot, We'll engage the muscles of our core, lift up, put the back foot into balancing half moon. With a block, without a block, you can use your bolster. Breathe, my friends. Feel that core hold you and support you today. We'll step the right foot back, not too far. Turn the toes towards the wall. Ooh, left elbow on top of right, I believe. It's my job to believe that I've got the right one. Bend your knees and hinge down. If this doesn't feel nice for your shoulders, you could always give yourself a little hug instead. Right on, so our hips should be pretty warm. Let's come up, tick tock our feet together. You'll face back up towards me and have your bolster at the top of your mat. We'll work towards our, our pigeon pose. And if, you're, if you wanna just really focus on stretching your hip, then you stay up. If you wanna do an arm balance, you come on down. I'll turn, oh, she's yelling at us this morning. Okay. We'll take the weight into your left foot and bring, you may need to make adjustments depending on how far away you are from your, from your bolster. We'll flex, bend, open and bring it across. So this is where we start to feel the strength of your core and bend your left knee and shift your hips back. And this is where you can stay. This is a wonderful, place to be. If you want to work on your arm balance, we bend the left knee even deeper and hinge forward, wrapping our left foot around the back. I mean, your right foot, pardon me, around the back <laughs> of your left arm. It'd be impossible to do the other one. You can walk your hands forward and bend your elbows so that your shin comes onto the back of your arms. You look forward at the bolster and maybe lift your back foot. And play around with it, come in and out until you're ready to come back up. Maybe you enjoyed your pigeon pose that whole time. We'll come back up. We'll try it on the other side. Flexing our leggings are doing good. Yeah. Okay. Flex that left foot, sit back, and we'll hinge, or you'll keep your heart up. So you could keep sitting up and hinging back or come down. Wrap the foot around the back of the arm. We wanna bend this knee strongly, look forward, maybe lift, maybe not. Really just depends on how you're feeling today. <sighs> come on up. Great job, everybody, big breath up. We better do our curl pose because that's the specialty of this class. If you'd like to, of course, you can just do a squat instead. If you're working on your jump back today, could even have the bolster more 
lengthwise like this, so that when you jump back, you're not gonna just collapse on the floor, you'll more collapse on your, on your bolster instead. Yeah. <laughs> just to make sure that face collapses on that and not the floor. Adele, I seriously, she just gets louder and louder. Okay. We hug our, our legs on the outsides of our arms. And as we come into curl, we want to think of almost a cat back, pulling the pelvic floor up and onto the toes. So we can find our crow and then work on maybe just stepping <laughs> one foot back. And then the other foot to a wide plank and then step it back forward bend bend and we'll play around with that for a bit once you get there you can try your jump back good job honey. <laughs> oh, i love you you're cute okay Great job, guys. Come to a seated position. We haven't got much time left, actually, about six minutes. We'll do a single leg forward fold. So let's take our right foot forward, turn our toes up. You could have a block underneath your knee if you're taking care of the outside of your knee. Let's grab today our right wrist, find some length. And if, if it feels good, we'll wrap that around our foot to stretch our wrist out or just reach. You can make any adjustments you need to, to, to want to feel more of this pose. Wonderful. Let's lift up our hearts, bring our hands to frame. Well, actually we'll have our hands to the inside of that knee. Sweeping our right leg all the way back now onto a pigeon pose. So the right kneecap down, the top of our right foot down. You can have this shin um, wherever it feels good for your knee. I keep mine tucked, tucked right in and then we'll come down into pigeon. If you do have a bolster, you can make this more restorative. Oh. And come down. Got about a minute here, so enjoy this. All right, let's push our hands into the mat, come up. If you'd like to try our king pigeon, you can. You start by just bending and straightening this back leg. See how that feels for your knees. And then you can start to reach back with one arm. Maybe your thumb is down. Well, you can tune it up too, if you want to go right to the outside of that foot. And if you want to, we hold on to our foot back there. Choose if you want to hold the outside or the inside, and we'll reach our opposite arm up. So we've got to engage the core. Our hips are up, and we're reaching up. King pigeons, finding our breath. Great work. We'll release. Stay there all day. We're getting so good at that one. All right, bending our right knee this time. Keep your bolster right where it is. Grab our left hand and find our single leg forward fold here. Or just holding on to your bolster, reaching towards your shin, keeping our spine as long as possible. Lovely. Great work, everyone. Let's walk those hands up. Sweep this left knee all the way back and around. We want our right knee towards the out top right hand corner of your mat. Left kneecap down. You can have your bolster here. 
feel lovely and come down onto your pigeon. Got a minute there, so think about maybe a nice warm fire. What? <laughs> Seriously, my Siri's talking to me. Allow the weight of your upper body to melt down, the tension to release from your hips, and then mostly your right hip at the moment. And then we'll press our hands into the mat. We'll come up. You can bring your left to right hand. Actually, it'll be your left hand probably to the center of the mat. You start to reach back to that opposite leg, or you can just work on bending and straightening that leg, strengthening your hamstring. If it feels good for you, you'll reach back for your foot. Maybe you can get it on this side, maybe you can't. If, it, if you can't get it with the opposite hand, you can go and try and grab it with your same side hand, but I find that pretty uncomfortable, but it might feel comfortable for you. Great job. Let's come down. Sweep both feet around this time. I want to get one wheel practice in and then we'll have a very short Shavasana. So let's hinge forward first. Three or four breaths here. All right. And then we will make sure we've got some space back behind us and we'll try our wheel today. So your modification for wheel is bridge. If you wanna try wheel, we've been working on this one. Well, this week to strengthen our upper backs, fingertips will face towards your shoulders. You'll take most of the weight into your feet, press and try to lift up your body until you can maybe get the head off the mat. So do what feels good for you for your wheel where you can still breathe. There's no weight on our head or we're just enjoy. Yay, great work, everybody. Make your way back down. Bring both of your knees into your chest and let's take just a real nice rock side to side. <sighs> Wonderful. You can stay here with your rock but we'll move into that Shavasana, extending our legs, either long pinky toes falling out to the sides, or you could have, be using your bolster in any way that feels good for you. Adding in another pose. Allow the weight of your body to be supported by the earth. Softening our jaws, our eyes. I'll leave you with just one small quote from Embers today. Walk gently on the earth and do each other no harm. When you're ready, start to notice the light of your room. Open and close our hands, bring some awareness back into our fingertips, our toes, our ankles, moving our head gently side to side, no rush whatsoever. 
take your time. It's 12.47. If you are in a rush to get back to work, you can, you can rush away. Otherwise, make your way to an easy seat. Take your time getting there. We'll take a big, juicy breath up. Inhale, and let's bring our hands and give ourselves a little hug today. Finding your upper back. Pat yourself on the back. It took effort to get here today. <laughs> One more big breath. Inhale. We'll draw our hands towards heart center and a humble bow towards the earth. That feels good today. Thankful and grateful for all of the gifts given. Namaste. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your wonderful Friday. Run of your weekend with Pilates tomorrow with Amy. If anyone wants to come at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It was a nice crowd last week too. That came. Yeah. Bye, Debbie. Have a wonderful day.